doing a chain swap on the Diablo because the current chain is getting a bit sloppy and I want to see if that's actually what's causing the bike to feel like it's hesitating a little bit. Usually if your chain gets too stretched out, gummed up, uh, you let chain maintenance go, you're not lubing on a regular basis and you let the chain get dry, the rubber seals can get ruined and uh, it completely just messes up the ride. So I'm going to try this out, see if the new chain works. So the tools you're going to need are mostly just a chain tool like this. I got this one on Amazon for like 40 bucks. It's basically the same as my EK tool, but I actually left my EK tool, it's like $120 kit, at uh, back in Ohio. <laughs> So, I uh, picked this up on Amazon for cheap until I can get my EK tool back. Now, the first thing that we're going to do, and I've already done it, is you need to take an angle grinder. You can see right there, this is the master link. You want to grind off the two heads um, that are on the master link, and we're going to press those through with one of these pins. So, what you do, I'll grab the 3.8. Let's see if that, yeah, it'll probably do the job. And you basically just push these pins through. So I'll, I'm going to set the camera up and then show you how you do that. Okay, now to start off, I'm going to show you, there's a little cap you have to unscrew off there. And this tool comes apart pretty easily. Um, this piece unscrews from the center. I'm going to fast forward this. So this pin slides down in there. You can see it pops out. And we're actually going to just want it out a little bit. So you want to take this and uh, gradually screw it in until that little bit starts popping out. There you go. So now we're going to screw it back in a little bit. Actually we want a guide. A little bit of a guide. Now these two pieces, this screws in as a handle so you can get some leverage. And then this piece is what you use as the lever for this if you need to start cranking it down harder. Otherwise you can just use a regular wrench, but this comes in the kit. So, move the camera a little closer. Now you see these two little holes where the rivets used to be. You want to center it up, and this actually has a hole in the back side. So you hook that onto, and it's hollow, so you're going to push it all the way through. So hook it onto the pin, screw this in, and center up that middle piece. And then unscrew it. There we go. Okay. Now we're going to start tightening this in. And it'll gradually drive that pin through. Okay. Now just to double check and make sure that it's not binding up or doing anything crazy. Nope, it's going in. Cool. So, now I want to do the same thing on the other pin. Hook on, take the tire back. There we go, it's hooked on. I don't need to push it through really far. Ugh. I'm gonna have to use a wrench to get that off. Nothing fancy, you just get a crescent. There we go. So, as you can see, the plate just came right off pull that out and then there's your two little bits so the way these work is you've got little o-rings that have to go on first you can see these are kinda set like that now the back plate will just pull right out there you go and then there's two o-rings on this side now these are actually um, x-rings or or whatever, pretty sure these are X-rings on this DID chain that came stock on the bike. It's a 525. So now, you can see the chain just drops right off. So, what you want to do now is hook your new chain. Um, do, 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 do. The easiest way to do this will be to move. So I'm going to reposition and show you how to draw the new chain all the way around without having to do a lot of weird work. All right, we're gonna cheat. Use a zip tie. <laughs> zip it up. 
there you go. The two are hooked up. So now, just rotate. And the chain will gradually feed through. Now this chain is long, so I'm probably going to have to cut it. This is the stupidly easy way to put a new chain on. And you can see it's coming through the top now. A zip tie. Oh. Here we go. Okay. Now, pull this over here. Oh. Well, Close. It's a little loose. I think we might need to go down one link. Yeah, yeah. I think one link is all I'll need to remove. So we'll get started on that. All right. Now to cut the chain, I need to remove one link. I'm pretty sure it needs 109 links, and I bought a chain with 110. Um, so I have to grind this head right here and this head to remove the link. Um, so you need to be very careful when you're doing this. This grinder cuts in a, if you're looking down counterclockwise, spins this way. So the sparks are going to shoot this direction. So you want to not have the grinder pointing toward up toward the bike or back toward the bike. You want to have it in a downward angle so that the sparks are hitting the ground and going away. Um, and you just kind of feather on the uh, God, what would you call it? The rivet. <laughs> and uh, you just gradually grind it away until it's flush like the, the pin I showed you when I was starting out. So I'm going to do that real quick, probably fast forward, and this will give you an idea. So that's it. I'll get you up close. Now, you can see that they're completely ground down and I can push the pins through. So now, you want to pull out your master link and the packet of grease that came with it. And tear open the grease. And you want this master link to be thoroughly greased up. So, you want to take a little goober there, a little goober there, and then use your finger to spread it all the way around. Because this is the grease that comes on the chain when it's factory new. And uh, this is the stuff that ends up getting lost over time. And when you ch spray chain lube on your chain, this is actually where you're trying to get the lube is down deep in the chain, in the bearings, in these little cracks. So you want it to be really good and greased before you put it on the bike. So that's pretty good. I'm just gonna get a little bit more down in this crack where the, see, down in there. So that's where one of the rings, the O-rings is going to go, or X-ring. Okay, so now we're getting it. It's pretty good and sealed up. So now, we're going to set this down. And we're going to take the X-rings. And basically you just want to swipe your finger so that it fills in. See the little groove in there? There's a little groove. You want to fill that groove in with grease because that's going to be pressed in between the chain and the plates on the outside. So all of the grooves all the way around the chain, I mean the, the o-ring, you want to fill in with grease. But the inside parts, either side, is really important to get thoroughly greased up. So you can do it like just in between your fingers. Okay. That one's pretty good and greased. So we take this one and set it down. Uh, pull up the master link. Take this and you slide it on like that. You got one. Do 
another one. Alright, that's two. Now, with those two done, you want to take your link and on the back side, push it through the back side of the chain, like that. And you take your chain, bring it up here, bring this up. This is awkward. I may actually have to loosen uh, the adjustment a little bit. Can't, couldn't fit just perfectly, could it? So it's actually easiest if you do the hook right here because you can loosen your chain and uh, basically just hook it on like that. Make sure your O rings are on there. Yeah. So you got your two rings, loosened your chain, you just hooked it up, and then you can just slide your master link through like that. And you want to make sure that it's pointing out this way because you're going to rivet in that way. You want to be able to see what you're doing when you rivet. So the next step, I'm going to have to move the camera to get a really good view of this, is uh, mushrooming or gradually pressing this plate on first. So we're going to push this plate on and then um, we're going to mushroom these little bits so that they actually hold the plate on. As you can see, these are like hammered on <clears throat> to mushroom and to flatten them out. Well, to get the same effect, you have to press a uh, wedge in to get the uh, circular paste please, to, to mushroom out. So I'm going to lube up the last two of these little X rings and then I'll show you that up close. The way I did this, instead of using the two plates to start out, um, I took the plain tool by itself and just hooked it on here. And uh, I just lightly pressed to get it started. Um, you don't want to crank it down real far, just like maybe a quarter turn. You just want it to get hooked onto the end of those. Now I'm actually going to take the plates and put them on. Because if you were to use this tool to do the entire thing, you'll actually scrape off. I'm not sure if you'll be able to see. But you'll actually scrape off. You can see it's silver now. Yeah. So that's why you want to have a really good chain tool so you don't mar up your brand new chain. I don't know how many dealerships do that, but it would not be cool if you spent, say, uh, 250 bucks on one of those 3D chains, and then the dealer hands you your bike back and it's like, uh, what the fuck? <laughs> so this is definitely the way to go to press your chain on. I just did that because I like to be quick and lazy. I don't really care so much about my chain looking absolutely perfect. So now I can have an easier time gradually straightening this up. And now that that's hooked on, you can see now I'm just going to use a wrench because it's a little bit easier than that other tool. Now you just want to twist it, gradually press the plate down until just to the point where the uh, bolts are pushing through. And I can kind of see from this angle. It's a little too small to get the camera in there, but you can look through the two guide holes and actually see. So I think that might be it. No, it's not. Got a long, long ways to go. So The EK tool is much better. <clears throat> Looks like it's doing it though. Back it off. Yes. Okay, that is flat. So, yet another example of why you shouldn't cheap out on tools because. Oh, these are big enough, but I mean, it would have to be just exactly on. 
try it. Not feeling confident about this though, guys. Not digging this tool. Kind of poopy. Got to get the alignment just perfect. Wait a minute. I don't even think the center to center distance is right. Okay, that's gradually getting it. You can see the uh, the heads are coming through. So I'm going to do it just a little bit more because you don't want these links to be too damn tight. But you also don't want them to be too loose. So this is where the fine balance comes into play. If you make them too tight, you're going to have basically a permanently kinked link in your chain. It's going to screw up your ride quality. Okay, that's definitely enough. <laughs> okay, I actually switched back to using just this because it gives me a lot more control and I actually had to push the plate back a little bit. You want to be really careful when you're doing this job because if you screw it up and your chain link breaks or the, the heads wear off or you've got them cranked way down too tight. Uh, tight is probably better than too loose because uh, a kinked chain you can always ride with, but if these heads aren't pushed through far enough, you can kind of get an idea of how far you want them through. A little bit less than that would probably be okay. It's somewhere between one to two millimeters. Um, you want them enough that they can mushroom out and hold the chain on, but if you did it not far enough, um, you could end up having this master link come out while you're riding, which could potentially launch your chain into your engine and destroy your engine, or uh, worse, lock up your rear wheel as you're going down the freeway at 80 plus miles an hour. And well, in Southern California, 80, 80 miles an hour is pretty much how fast traffic goes. But anyway, you get the idea. You could have your your bike lock up when you're not expecting it, and kaboom, you're flying in the air doing the Superman in front of a semi. So very careful when doing this. I'm gonna now move on to using the, uh, the anvil to mushroom those out. And with this you want to be firm but not go crazy because if you go too hard you can actually fracture the, uh, the heads of those. So I'm going to find the anvil and uh, show you that. Okay, so now the tools you want to have on this tool. God. You've got this flat anvil to hold the back of the pin in place so you're not pushing it through as you're trying to crush it. Um, that just goes in here. And then this is the riveter. It has a rounded uh, end on it as you can see, almost like a, a welding rod. And that, with a spring, I don't know what the use of the spring is, it's kind of silly, but the EK tool doesn't have that. So now you're going to spin this down until, until you just see that coming out the other end and then you back it off until it's like I don't know, eighth of an inch in there. And you spin this up and then with that you hook onto, let's do the bottom one first hook the anvil onto the back side and then you just spin this on backing that off make sure that it's good on there firm but not like pushing down on the plate you don't want to crank this part down with a wrench you're just going to do this so now we've got the riveter dialed up it's nice and firm and we're just going to give it say uh, half turn and then you back it off and you take the thing off to see how it did. Now that didn't do much. So I'm actually going to go a full turn with the rivet. This is that better safe than sorry. So there's one half and that's probably good. It's more like one well, three quarters. Okay. Got 
still... Well, it's kind of hard to tell because this riveter doesn't dimple in the middle very well. But you can see that there's a little bit of a shiny, shiny edge on the bottom side if you see the light right. So it is doing it. I'm going to do it just a little bit harder just to be safe. And then I'm going to move on to the other one. Okay, so as you might be able to see now, I had to close the garage door. The neighbor kids are really loud in the pool across the way. So the flares are actually pretty beefy on this thing. And I, uh, focal length of this action cam is not that great, but let me see if I can get a good, that's probably okay. But anyway, you can see that they're kind of sunken in. It's a flared shape. The flare is maybe a millimeter wide, and um, it should work pretty well. But I'm going to take the bike for a ride after I do a little bit of cleanup and uh, see how this chain does. I, I bought a couple extra master links, so if down the road it gets really gunked up, I can just take the chain off and uh, use some kerosene to thoroughly clean the crap out of it. I got this chain for, I think, less than 100 bucks on Amazon. It's a uh, EK 525MV XZ. It's got 120 links, so I guess it's 119 links for the factory chain. Um, and it's a 525, as the part number says. But seems to be as good as any of the DIDs that I've had. And um, I bought two extra master links I think just to uh, just to have them in case anything is looking weird with this one so uh, hope that helped you guys and if I do another chain swap down the road I'll do try to get a better video when I've actually got somebody who can hold the camera for me I was using a tripod but it was still a bit awkward in this little garage I really need to get a bike lift that would make things much easier um, so, hope that helped. If anybody has any questions, feel free to ask. Bye.